Hello, welcome to my little studio. To be honest, it's a shed, but one day when I get the windows in, hopefully this year, then it'll be a little posh and I can refer to it as my studio. This is where we're going to do lots and lots of little videos, tutorials, very simple, quick ones, where I can share as many things as I discover with you. I've been making papier-mâché for over 25 years. I've sold it all over the world, in the Guggenheim in New York, in Japan. I've made furniture, bowls, candlesticks, all sorts of things, lots and lots of jewellery. And I like to play around with different kinds of media, so bringing together resins and acrylic paints and following old-fashioned recipes, so maybe bringing them up to date. So recently I've been using um, a product called Porzello, which for years I've made my own paste, but this is a really fine, readily available, it's rather like very squidgy porcelain. It makes a great product and you can, um, what I do is I press it into something like a pendant. You can press end of a fur cone into it, like that, make a little hole or a big hole, whatever comes to hand, and then stick it onto a piece of glass and put it somewhere to dry. I've made a drying cabinet, it's really useful. It's a wooden box with a couple of glass shelves and I've put the bottom of a propagating unit in, you know, so it gives a nice soft heat. I've also stuck a heat lamp in if I really want to get extra boost of heat to dry things off. Generally speaking, I can put things in overnight and in the morning they're beautifully dry and ready to paint. So on that note, um, I've been using Pozzello to make beads. These are quite flat, but I will, I think, you know, covered in copper, gold and silver leaf, they're going to look quite nice. I've been making more fancy ones by pressing in the ends of, uh, ends of uh, poppy heads and things to create twisty beads. Um, and I've been making moulds using a product called um, Silly Gum. It's a two-part epoxy paste, which I'm sure most of you know about. One's blue, one's white. You mix them together to get a uniform pale blue. And then you work quite quickly and you make um, moulds. I've been collecting these things for years and now I have a use for all of them. So press this one into there and got this beautiful shape, which then gives me that which could be a pendant pendant or brooch. Um, I've also stuck one inside a product called Modrock, which is a gauze which is impregnated with plaster of Paris. I think it used to be used in orthopaedic wards, but it's great for um, making crafty things. I've got different uh, moulds here. One is um, an old rock I picked up down at the harbour. It's covered in barnacles, but when it was pressed in the silly gum, it leaves this beautiful kind of rich deep textured on the base and that actually came out as heart shaped which is quite sweet and I've made those, I'm making them independent so we'll, we'll, we'll do all of these together. Um, another lovely product I found, we've got beautiful gardens here at Dartington, lots of magnolia trees so in the in the winter time I go around and collect up all these rather woody seed heads not knowing what to do with them and really I only need one to make a mould, which is what I've done, and that translates again into something like that, but you can make lots of them, or a few, or just one. Um, things don't normally get past me. Uh, this is on the road, it's just an old beer bottle cap, but it's been squashed by lorries and cars and lots and lots of feet, gone very rusty. However, there's some beauty in it, and in itself it's quite beautiful. But when it's pressed into one of these epoxy moulds, it then produces, because these things can, you can make loads of them. And this is just lots and lots of impressions from it. So you could make a necklace. I think that's going to look great, actually. Um, with the moulds, I also like to press fur cones into them because you get a really random effect from the base, which can make quite attractive little discs. I mean, these can be added to papier-mâché bowls, they can be made into earrings, we can do all sorts of things. Smaller ones, already made into earrings, which are very attractive. They really are so simple and so attractive. Um, one of the things I like to do is take tissue paper and a little bit of um, Pozzello and whoops, smear it onto the back of the tissue paper. You won't be able to see here. And I have actually got one I did earlier on just to save time so it's a bit like that and then what I do with that is I 
I put them in the drawing cabinet overnight so they're like that little crispy things and then I coat some of them on the back with resin so you get a shiny surface which is quite hard and then the other side is still this beautiful pasty porcelain effect which can be painted and gilded um, some of them get ripped apart like that and then turned over see so that they create a little cone and when they've dried out again I don't really know what I'm going to do with them but I do know that they're going to be pretty beautiful when they're finished this mod rock is quite remarkable stuff um, not only have I made rings with it which are going to look pretty good I've also been making bangles and bangles I just wrapped the mod rock round um, I think it was an old yoghurt carton but anyhow it was about the size of my wrist and I've got quite large workers hands actually I do a lot of gardening and a lot of craft work and I don't really bother about manicuring so you won't see manicured painted long nails on any of my tutorials um, some of the uh, mod rock I've been making into, into brooches this little square one has got lots of texture on and it's going to have a lot of bronzes and coppers in it and little areas of resin and areas of matte. This one is made, just a little rectangle, is made by cutting, let me show you, a couple of um, pieces of mod rock and cutting a bit off, painting them together because it sticks very readily. And I'm getting a little piece of poisello and sticking it along the top. Somewhere or other I've got a piece of twisty wire, which now I can't find, but that doesn't matter. I can use this little thing and just make some indentations along the top so that I can lift it up without it falling apart. There. Now, it doesn't look very much at the moment, but what I intend to do, this is one I made earlier, as I say, I'm going to coat it with silver leaf and I'm going to put it in a cardboard box with a couple of hard boiled eggs because I've got five chickens out the back all ready to produce eggs every day and break the eggs open and put the whole lot, cover that in silver leaf and put the whole lot in the magic cabinet to dry overnight and the sulphur from the eggs mixes with the, the gut with the silver and it creates a patina of sort of purples and greens and blues and and it's and bronzes and it's so beautiful and when it gets to the stage that you really like it it might take three or four days to get as deep as you wish it you then cut coat it with resin and that's it it stays like that forever it's beautiful so that's about it apart from to say what I do like to use quite a lot of nowadays is this stuff called um, treasure gold it's um, a terpsy smelling gilders uh, paste which you rub into the work and then it, you, when it's dry you just buff it up. That creates some beautiful effects. I use quite a lot of sepia ink and I've recently been using um, this lovely French sepia ink from Cornelissons. I've got lots of links to Cornelissons on my website and I use um, obviously a lot of these acrylic inks, they're really useful, and Renaissance wax which it doesn't leave fingerprints, so it's a very useful thing for jewellery. I love beeswax because it has a real soft luster. Uh, it does leave fingerprints, but you can always buff it off. And of course, beeswax has that nice smell. But that's a really useful thing. One other thing I do, uh, yes, I was showing you about making these um, these beads. Let me see if I can show you a piece of um, clay, Pozzello. And I push a stick down the centre, squidge it with my fingers, chop off the ends, and have a, a bead like that, which I leave to dry in the cabinet. And I've got a few here that I made before. Where have they gone? Oh, here they are. And 
I've dried them out and I've coated them with resin that's kind of soaked in so it makes a nice sand but a little bit like ceramic and they make most beautiful um, necklaces and beads. Here I've just strung some on a piece of, of wire just to give the idea and I've interspersed some with these little um, beads which are made of Tyvek which is commonly used nowadays in, in fabric art and um, an iridescent sort of iridescent tissue which is really useful. So I wrap the Tyvek around um, a kebab stick and I shrink it with a heat gun and then I add this stuff to it and so it comes out like that and then we end up with lots and lots of little beads and they're really pretty and they don't weigh anything and they are ultimately biodegradable but for quite a few years we can have them as necklaces and things. Um, sometimes you can put um, coloured ink. I've put the sepia ink here and that um, just gives it, oh, it gives it such an ancient look as if they really have been dredged up from a treasure chest under the sea. I can take the uh, Mod Rock and wrap it round paintbrushes and let it dry and then paint it and gild it and make it into necklaces. It goes on and on and on. There are so many ideas I've got to share after having done papier mache for 20 odd years. So tomorrow I will make the first little tutorial. Um, I think perhaps we'll start with these sort of natural things, you know, the sort of the seed heads and the ends of the fir cone. Um, I've also been playing around with um, polymer clay as well. So I like to introduce a mixture of um, Modrock, Pozzello, resin, papier-mâché and, um, and polymer clay and see what happens. So tomorrow we'll start on the tutorials. Okay, bye.